you ever play the viola now? No. No, because you see, uh, for one string player who played, I mean, after many years I can, I was a good uh, viola player. You can play badly the piano, but you cannot play, play badly an string instrument. Mm -hmm. Because, especially. <laughs> because of course in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the string instrument there are two problems. One is the intonation and the, the second one is the, 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 the bow. Mm. Then if you lose this completely contact, the instrument is a part of your body. Then uh, I will never forget many, many years ago, uh, I used to, to play and then I once, um, after a long time that I didn't play anymore, I wanted to try a, a Boeing, and I take uh, the, the, the viola case, and, uh, and during the first movement to open the case, I had the feeling that this was not anymore natural. Then I said, it's finished. I didn't open the case. Because, you know, for um, a, a string player who when it, I started uh, less than five years old to have the violin in the hands, the movement or to open the case, to put the, the, the and to tune the instrument, is um, like breathe, like to breathe. We don't think that we breathe. It's natural. The movement becomes absolutely natural. In the moment in which I had a feeling that this was an, not anymore natural, I said, finished. You didn't ever play for Toscanini, did you? No, no, because in the time where I was playing in orchestra, Toscanini was uh, uh, out of Italy for uh, political reasons. Then uh, I met Toscanini after after the war when he came back to Italy, but I was already conducting. Then I didn't play with him. Who did you enjoy playing most under? I believe you played under Klemperer, Walter, Fuerte, uh, I, I play, uh you know, Augusteo Orchestra in Rome was one of the goal for every great artist. Then it's no a great conductor, no a great composer, no a great solist that you can mention, except Toscanini, with who I didn't play. It's no one. You can say all the names that you want. I played with everybody. Mm. Then uh, because uh, Everybody wanted uh, to come, the Augusteo, first of all, the whole Augusteo was something extraordinary, unique in the world. I never saw something like this. It was a special hall. It doesn't exist in there. It's just beautiful halls everywhere, marvelous. But this was something unique that I never saw. In, uh, and the orchestra was, I can say this very objectively now, one of the best in the world. Uh, it's very, uh, I don't know, uh, not only once, but it has happened twi uh, a few times that a great conductor stopped the orchestra not to say to, to do the better, but to say, like this, I never heard. Please play once more. Yes, this I will never forget. But conductors like Bruno Walter, like this, um, um, or the Sabbath, or Kremper, and so on. Then uh, you can imagine for a young man who um, did a lot of uh, string quartet, uh, studying composition, and to live in this orchestra, which is experience it. This is one, uh, one thing that I'm never enough grateful to my and, and I li it's a bit also a little bit proud to have, to have lived in the orchestra, to sit in this chair. In fact, I, I never think that I am a conductor. I never come out of the orchestra. I'm always a musician of the orchestra. I, when I do a conductor, I always think I go to make music with other musicians. But it is, uh, Beecham used to call conducting, said that it was a very mysterious craft. When you think of uh, people you played under, De Sabata, Ford Wengler, Klemper, Walter, their approach, say, to one bar of music, the opening of Beethoven V, is so different. Exactly. And the way they get what they want. Yeah. This is no answer. Again, a mystery. This is no answer, no. Mm. Because, uh, just to, to give you uh, an example, we had in Italy two great conductors, uh, many great conductors, I mean, but uh, uh, to, to give you an example now. The Sabata, who was really a great conductor, but he had the movement of Sabata was almost a dance interpretation of the music. He, the movement of the, um, the, the hand, uh, we had a great, great, great conductor, you know, one of the greatest talent, and, uh, but very, very uh, little known out of Italy because he was very lazy. 
and this was Antonio Guarnieri. He didn't move at all. He had a baton like this, he didn't move at all, and the sound of an orchestra comes on it. Why? There's no answer. The movement of, of, of Futwengler are all wrong. They're all wrong, the movement, no? But for Futwengler, Futwengler. Then, uh, the, uh, uh, but this is no answer for this. But it's a very strange thing, conducting. In a way, it's a very unnatural thing, isn't it? You have to be the authority, but you have to be also the man making music with the music. This is the point. Forget the word authority. But if you don't have it... Ah, but this uh, is not, you know, I always say, if you do something because you are ordered to do something, you do in a way. But if you do something because you are convinced that to do this way is right, then you do it another way. Then the fact is that everybody has to be convinced. And how you convince, I don't know. Then this is not authority in this way, because the authority is the authority of a person who command. Uh, what I mean is something who convince. You say convince in English? Convince. Then, uh, then it's something that you do together. You know, not the one who or say, do like this. No, we do together. And this, how this happened, I don't know. This I don't know. I know that you're a person of very strong religious faith. Does it worry you if you have to do music that might seem to go against that feeling of faith, if you conduct music of, of a composer who you know perhaps wasn't a very good man, like Debussy or Wagner? Uh, you see, um, I can tell you what I think about this problem. Uh, in my opinion, there are two kind of human being who lives in a dimension that we don't know. There are the saint. But the saint has to be good. The genius. The genius can be very poor man. Then suddenly something happened and they go in a dimension that we don't know. Then when you talk about this kind of uh, a great genius in the music life. When they do, when they write the music, they are in this dimension. Then this dimension can be never against humanity, can be never bad, can be never against the conception of God, doesn't matter what it is. Something happened. Then in any case, you are in a spiritual dimension. 